I'm glad you've joined me today for a special reading for Easter weekend. And uh, this book is new to me. I just I actually just ordered it and received it. And it's very creative. And it's called He is Risen. And all the pictures are of rocks that tell the story of Easter. So if you notice carefully, those are all real rocks that tell the story of Easter. This book is written by uh, Patty Rokas. Patty Rokas. John 3.16, one of the most famous verses in the Bible, says that for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And so the very first point in the book is that Jesus loves me. 1 John 4.19 says we love him because he first loved us. Jesus came to earth to bring us healing and joy and to lead us back home to God. In John 16.33, Jesus said this, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. The last week of Jesus's mortal life was the most important week ever. Luke 19.38 said, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Many people celebrate Jesus as the Savior. Luke 19.37 says the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen. But some people wanted to kill Jesus. John 11.53 tells us that from that day on, they plotted to kill him. One friend even betrayed him. Mark 14.18, Jesus said, Assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Before Jesus died, he taught his friends important lessons at his Last Supper. Love and serve one another. He poured water into a basin and he began to wash his disciples' feet. Eat and drink in remembrance of me. Jesus said, this is my body which is given for you. The cup is the new covenant of my blood which is shed for you. Then he prayed in a garden, taking upon himself all our pain and sorrows so we can let them go. Mark 14, 34, so he said, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Jesus willingly gave his life on the cross. He paid the price for our sins to rescue us and bring us home. In Isaiah 53, 4-5, which was a prophecy written about Jesus hundreds of years before he was born, it says, He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions, and by his stripes, his wounds, we are healed.
he was buried in a tomb. Mark 15, 46. Then Joseph of Arimathea bought fine linen, took him down, and wrapped him in the linen, and he laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock. After three days, Jesus came back to life. We will all live again because Jesus conquered death. John eleven twenty five. 25, Jesus said this, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even though he dies, yet will he live again. Alive again, Jesus visited his friends. Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. Behold my hands and my feet. Jesus' hands and feet had scars because they nailed him to the cross. He asked his friends to share the good news of his burial, death, and resurrection and salvation for anyone who trusts in him. He said to them, feed my lambs, tend my sheep. Jesus went to heaven. Why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in the like manner that he ascended, Acts 1.11. He promised to come back again. In John 14, 1 to 3, he said, I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Jesus did it all for you and for me. In Matthew 28, 20, he says, I am with you always. How will you show your love for Jesus? According to John 14, 15, he said, Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey or keep my commandments. Let me pray for you. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for coming to planet Earth 2,000 years ago and living the perfect life that we so struggle to live so that you could give us your righteousness in exchange for our sin. That when we repent of our sin and trust in you for our salvation, that you say that anyone who comes to me, you will not cast away. Thank you that 2,000 years ago, you lived that perfect life. You went to the cross and died on the cross for our sins. And you rose again and that you're coming again. And I pray that until you come, we will obey your commandments, that all your commandments we know are good for us. You tell us what not to do and what to do, because all those things you tell us to do are what's best for us, and we want to please you. So help us to be obedient to you today. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.